Hi there, I'm Silas Chapman, and this is Let's Talk Archaeology. For most of North American prehistory, stone tools were the norm in terms of everyday tools. However, there are exceptions to this. Metallurgy did occur in prehistoric North America. Lead, gold, meteoric iron, and mostly copper were used for this metallurgy. One of the most famous of these metallurgical prehistoric traditions in North America is the Old Copper Complex, which dates to 4000 to 1000 BCE. The Old Copper Complex is one of the earliest metallurgical traditions in the world. However, the people who came after the Old Copper Complex stopped using copper tools and went back to using stone tools. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Old Copper Complex and the use of copper in North America. The Old Copper Complex is from the Upper Great Lakes region, around Lake Superior. Here, copper occurs in a natural, mineral, metallic form, called native copper. This native copper can be found as float copper, which is glacially transported to copper pieces that are found on the surface or just below the surface. Copper was also mined from outcrops and veins using mining tools and digging sticks. The largest native copper deposits occur in Isle Royal in Lake Superior, the Keweenaw Peninsula in Upper Michigan, and the Brule River in Wisconsin. Native copper can also be found in the form of float copper all the way south to the Ohio River as it was transported by glaciers during the Pleistocene. Once old copper complex people had gathered copper, it wasn't smelted. Native copper occurs in a pure form and it was cold hammered and annealed into shape. Cold hammering is simply the process of hammering copper while it's cool about like room temperature. Annealing is the process of heating up copper until it's glowing hot and then cooling it in water or by cooling it in air. Cold hammering can result in copper being hard and brittle compared to its original soft state. To keep work hardened copper from tearing or breaking, it was annealed to revert it to its original soft state and work shaping the copper could continue. The Old Copper Complex dates to 4000 to 1000 BCE, in the middle to late archaic periods. Copper Complex archaeological sites can be found in northern Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Canada, all in the Upper Great Lakes region. The Copper Complex encompassed a range of egalitarian hunter-gatherer societies, who all used similar copper working techniques and Tool forms. These people also use stone tools alongside copper tools for everyday use. As previously stated, copper complex people mostly use cold hammering, working the copper in a cool room temperature state, and annealing to shape their copper tools and objects. However, it is also possible that in prehistory, copper complex people did use hot hammering, hammering the copper while it's still glowing hot from the fire, to shape their tools and objects. Copper was bent, folded, abraded, riveted, and more to achieve the desired finished product that the people were intending. Copper complex people used stone anvils and hammers to shape their copper tools, but also may have used some copper tools like mandrels to shape the sockets of their tools. Copper complex people worked copper into socketed or caned knives and spear points, crescent shaped blades, fish hooks, awls, axes, adzes, chisels, harpoons, wedges, and much, much more. The things that Copper Complex people created were mostly utilitarian tools. Uniquely, however, these utilitarian tools very often show up in grave contexts. Despite being a common grave good and being in very good shape when they are placed in these contexts, Use of analysis shows that these copper tools were indeed used for everyday tasks. Speaking of old copper complex mortuary contexts, the Ocanto Cemetery is one of the more interesting copper complex sites. This middle archaic copper complex cemetery is located in Ocanto, Wisconsin, and is an archaeological site that is open to the public for visitors. Ocanto Cemetery was excavated in 1952 as part of salvage archaeology for mining that was going on adjacent to the site. A lot of the site was being destroyed and researchers were doing their best to preserve what remained of the site. 
53 individual remains were excavated from Old Kanto. However, the archaeologists from the 1950s estimate that there were 200 individuals here originally, but these remains had been destroyed from the mining. From these remains, 32 adults have been identified, 9 juveniles, 4 infants, and 8 unidentified remains. The Middle Archaic people at Okanto were buried in primary burials, flex burials, bundle burials, and cremations within a sand ridge that is present at the site. The people who buried their deceased included grave goods, both of copper, stone, and bone. The copper objects here are primarily tools, such as spear points, axes, and knife blades. Similar items were made from stone, like projectile points. Bone tools include awls and needles. Over time, the use of copper for tools in this region started to decline. Since copper tools were buried with copper complex people, we know that they were important for social status and had some sort of symbolic meaning to the people who made and used them. As the late archaic period came about, the old copper complex merges into the red ochre complex within the upper Great Lakes region. During this time, the population increased, as well as the number of people who lived within a community's population. This also saw a change in social status, and there was more social hierarchy. Copper became more important for symbolic uses and for personal adornment. It also became very important as a trade good, and was exported and traded throughout the Midwest. Because copper became increasingly valuable, people stopped using it as everyday tools. Instead, they started using stone tools again for everyday tasks like projectile points, knives, and much more. And copper became increasingly important for symbolic use and for personal adornment. People in North America still used copper after the old copper complex disappeared. The Hopewell and the Mississippians are two cultural examples of people using copper after the late archaic period. With the Hopewell and Mississippians, copper was used for many symbolic and art functions. In fact, they made some very incredible art pieces out of copper. So what we know is that 4000 to 1000 BCE, people in the Upper Great Lakes region were making and using copper tools. They mined native copper that was easily obtainable from both the surface and mined from pits in its metallic mineral form. They made and used a wide variety of utilitarian tools for every kind of use. However, they also made objects of ornamentation and ceremonial function. Over time, in the later cake period, people stopped using copper for everyday utilitarian tools and started using them more for personal adornment and symbolic functions. In essence, copper use evolved from utilitarian everyday tools to non-utilitarian functions. Copper objects really never disappeared from the North American archaeological record, but just started being used in different ways. In conclusion, the Old Copper Complex is a very unique chapter in North American prehistory and remains one of the most distinct archaeological cultures in the Upper Great Lakes region. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Let's Talk Archaeology. Please drop a like on this video and click the subscribe button to stay tuned for future videos on this channel. Let me know if you have any suggestions for future Let's Talk Archaeology episodes. Anything pertaining to archaeology is a candidate for these kinds of videos. I'm Silas Chapman from Pathways of the Past and I'll see you guys next time.